Happy Thursday, everyone, from my garden. <laughs> I'm actually, Rosalind was like, are you outside? <laughs> yes, I'm outside. It's only 51 degrees. Um, so welcome to the Flex Your Influence Spotlight. Today we have Rosalind, who will introduce herself in just a second. And I wanted to, um, I wanted to remind us like what this show is, why I do it. It's completely unscripted. We don't do any prep for this except for maybe five minutes before the show. And here's why, because I love um, authenticity. And I feel like, you know, if I'm not, I'm showing up in my, my work from home garb <laughs> and I'm comfortable, but I am still wanting to, um, I'm wanting to connect with my fellow women business owners. And this is why I have this show. So that way I can spotlight what they're doing, topics that are relatable, topics that are near and dear to me that maybe are near and dear to them as well. And um, I also want to say thank you for the feedback that I get on the show because um, that's important too. Because it's like we're showing up. Is there a reason why we're showing up? And the answer to that is yes. And so, Rosalind, I want to thank you for being on a show that you don't get any preparation for. <laughs> I can definitely attest to the fact that there it is unscripted. <laughs> I'm like, what exactly are we going to talk about? Yeah. Um, but um, I think that's fun. I think it just adds that level of like, allowing just whatever is on our minds, our hearts um, for the day, rather than coming in with an agenda. And so um, Rosalind was, I know this is the day, I know tomorrow is International Women's Day, but Rosalind just reminded me. So I just uh, wanna wish everyone a happy International Women's Day. We will definitely, Socialize LA will put out some stuff tomorrow. And, um, but what a day to celebrate women. Yes. So Rosalind, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, everyone. Margaret, thank you for having me. And I am excited. I know that you are celebrating like 51 degrees. I am down in sunny South Florida and it is probably about 85 degrees here. So we are uh, experiencing some much warmer temperatures, but I am a business advisor. I really come alongside business owners to help them um, be able to find the tools to power success. A lot of times that's done through sales strategy, business advising, maybe process improvement in their business, mm. all of that type of stuff. Um, but the personal side of me is really as a best-selling author, I have a book out and it is really about the mental wellness of individuals and how our lives can change one word at a time. I love that. Can you expand on that? Would you mind? No, no. So the name of my book is called Power of One, Finding Hope in the Midst of Struggle. And I wrote it in 2020. Uh, and it really is like whatever it is that you're going to set out to do, whether it is today or the next day, it starts with the power of one, one movement, one question of curiosity, one uh, experience, one moment in history. And I think sometimes we overcomplicate um, the simplicity of the power of one. Wow. I love that. And this, I didn't know. So I, Rosalind and I met uh, through a little organization that you might've heard me talk about before, NAVO, the yes. National Association of Women Business Owners. I say that Rosalind, because I mention it every single time because pretty much everyone I've had on this show, I've met through NAVO. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. But um, I did not know that. And I, um, I love that. And I love that your business I know that you're very successful in your business um, consulting and advising, and I love your uh, your approach of the mental health and wellness, and um, which kind of like led me to something that piqued my interest when we were just getting to know each other was um, the conflict resolution side of business. And normally when I think of conflict resolution, I think of like two people fighting, <laughs> but that's not always the case. It's like, I was thinking like conflict can be, um, I don't understand what you want me to like, where the project's going, or I don't, you, you, you know, in our businesses, you know, we might give our teams like a to-do list mm -hmm. and then the next day we have another to-do list. And, but if the team member doesn't ask for clarification, there's mm -hmm. conflict there. 
Yes. So tell us a little bit about conflict. Oh my goodness. Let me tell you, I feel like anytime there are two ideas bumping up against each other, there can be tension and conflict. And for many people, it feels uncomfortable. It can happen in business. My goodness, if you have a teenager, it can happen with your children. But I really think about when you're in those situations, don't overthink it. I am the type of person that is like, how do we get to the lowest common denominator? Um, and so when you think about the person that you might be in conflict with, don't think about like, oh my gosh, I'm having this outrageous conversation. Think about that other person as your conversation partner. And when you think of it in that way, it, it kind of takes away some of the escalation that can start to happen with your tone and think of them as your conversation partner. And really the most simple thing you can do in that situation is a listen. Again, I think people overcomplicate, right, Margaret? You're you're in a meeting or you're talking with your team and you are so focused on what you want to say that you're not using the active listening skills to understand and get underneath the words that are being spoken. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Now that active listening, that's a that's that is such a great tool, you yes. know. Um and also having that emotional intelligence too to be able to tap in to see where this is coming from. Yes. You know, there's so many. Um, I'm going to take this back to like team dealing with team, maybe dealing with like if you're if you sit on a board, um, yes. or even just with your, you know, if you have. I see that you're the co-founder of your company, so you yeah. have a, a, a partner, yeah, a business partner. So in those situations, um, and I in my experience it was like a it was like the heavens opened up when i realized i can ask clarifying questions yes. without without sounding dumb or like i wasn't listening it's like if you didn't get it you didn't get it just yes. ask for clarification and there's nothing wrong with that none at all but i think sometimes the person who is asking the questions like they have to feel safe enough to be able to ask those questions so if they've asked a question in the past and they've been shot down then yes they're going to clam up and not going to ask the questions and then the productivity starts to decline because they don't have the clarifying facts that they need so again thinking about it as i'm having this conversation with a conversation partner like i want you to be a partner in the business with me let's talk about i I always said, extend the invitation. Like, I understand that this is your point. Help me understand how did you arrive at that point? Because mm -hmm. then, especially when you're in a tense conversation, it then puts the burden on them versus you to try and figure it out. A lot of times we walk away from conversations and we're trying to figure out, Margaret, did they mean this or did they mean that? Or you provide the invitation to say, how did you arrive at that conclusion? I love that. Then the burden's on them, right? It, it is. And then maybe they get to <laughs> they get to go through the thought process again. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think just going back to myself as like a, a um, maybe like a novice business owner, you know, just mm -hmm. in my earlier stages, mm -hmm. I felt like when my client, when I asked, when, you know, the first, the first draft of whatever the client gave me, it's like, if I didn't get it, then I'm not like, I'm not an expert then. I'm not, I didn't get it. Yeah. So there was like that insecurity there too. So how comfortable we are and then how assured we are. Mm -hmm. But if we're in the role that we're in, well, obviously we do need to, <laughs> you know, we need to be part of these conversations, the conversation partner. I love that. Yes. Your conversation partner. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to uh, say to fellow business owners. Yes. If you have employees that aren't, that are, you know, that are not clear on what needs to get done, and you know this because either the work's not getting done or it's not getting done the way you want it to, I would say, let's ask ourselves, are we approachable? Yes. How do we, you know, how do we react when we're asked a second or a third time? And um, I think that could really, really help. I mean, just these little tips right here, Roslyn. Yes. is not is you know you think i think i know how to deal with conflict <laughs> but these little pieces i think are going to even make me a better leader yeah i think even even margaret when you think about 93 percent of what we say comes from our body language and i think a lot of people think it's just what i say 
It's not. It's the tone in which you say it. Obviously, it's the context in, in which you are saying it. it's the timing. But 93% of it is your body language. So if you are like this or if someone walks in and you're just kind of like and not giving them any eye attention, yeah. uh -huh. that body language says you're not even engaging with what I'm saying yeah. to you. So, yeah, they're going to shut down. The other thing I will say to really be uh, am inclusive of your conversation partner, drop the acronyms. Oh my goodness. So many times we are dropping so many acronyms. And if, especially if someone is brand new to the organization <laughs> or you're onboarding a new client mm -hmm. and you're using these acronyms that they may or may not understand and they feel like I should know this. So I'm not going to ask. Right. To be inclusive in your language with your conversation partner, absolutely drop the acronyms. Oh my goodness. Yep. Uh, well, uh, this this is another growth moment that is relatable is I have gotten very comfortable um, when someone uses a word that I don't know what it is and I'm comfortable with them. I say, what does that mean? Mm. Because I, I'm like, I'm. it's okay that we don't know everything. Mm -hmm. or that something slipped our minds. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like this is about, this is about working together. And um, this is a little off topic, but yesterday in my Instagram stories, I posted something that it said, um, I have to read it, but it was my most liked story ever. Oh, let's see. Oh, wow. I love it that. Was, it was the most liked story. And it was all about, it was just like, today you might stand next to someone who is doing everything to not fall apart. Mm. So whatever we do today, let's do it with kindness. And it all goes back to that. You know, we can't take ourselves so seriously. Mm -hmm. We are people. These are people. And now these are lessons that you know, I didn't always have, I was, I have, I haven't been, oh, I haven't always been this uh, gracious, mm -hmm. but you know, when you get really gracious, when you go through something really terrible mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. just start to see like, whoa, you start seeing things through another lens, through another lens, through another lens. Absolutely. I mean, um, as, as I was sharing kind of pre-show, I just had a death by suicide in my family. And of course, sometimes we really try to take ourselves away from there's the work me and then there's the personal me. But ever since 2020, right, all of those things are integrated. And so you need to be able to have safe spaces where you're able to talk about what's happening and then move further into the work that needs to get done. Because at the end of the day, as business owners, there is work that needs to get done. But you have to leave margin in your day to be able to handle those moments. Um, for me, <laughs> I know most people will laugh. I take an hour and a half every single day for lunch. That is my time to reset my day. I feel like I should probably be in Spain <laughs> where they take like two, three hour lunches. But I do that so that I'm able to have the space to deal with as I'm consulting um, my clients, all type of emotions can come up, even though I really focus on the, the problems that are in the business. And so I have to give myself space to be able to recharge, to take on those afternoon appointments that I have. Um, so for our listeners and the ones that are viewing us, what are you doing every day to really kind of fill your cup, even if it's in the middle of your day? Wow. That's amazing. Oh, my dad just posted on our comments. Oh, I love that. Oh, my gosh. Um, you know, mm -hmm. and then again, it's like business owners. You know, my heart just goes out for business owners, small business owners and women business owners. Yes. Um, because when things like that happen, it's not like we can say, oh, we're going to take a family leave of absence. Mm -hmm. We it, it doesn't work that way. Now, ideally, it would be nice to be able to step away. Um, but it's also a time to to um, allow the work that you do. This is how I felt the work that I do to get me out of like what was happening on the other side. Yes. And now I can focus on what's really great and what's really good. Yes. And um, and keep working at that. You know, um, that's another show for another day. 
<laughs> but we will, Rosalind, I will have you back on and we will talk about uh, when, you know, our colleagues, when we go through a tragedy in life, yeah. uh, it's a very unique thing when you own a business and you're very much a part of the every single day. Yes, absolutely. And it could be highs, uh, you know, things that are tragic, but then also things that are celebratory, like the birth of a new baby, right? That changes everything that's going to be happening in your a new puppy coming into puppy. the family. Right? Yeah. Moving cross country. Yes, absolutely. It all impacts uh, you as a whole person. So you got to yeah. leave space for that, right, Margaret? Like you have to leave space for that. Yeah. But I love your um, what you shared about you take an hour and a half lunch um, to reset. So what I do is my Wednesday in the middle of the week, I call it my first Friday. Um, because, yeah, it's my first Friday. So if you remember, Empower Hour used to be on Wednesday. Yes. And then when I started hosting it, um, the conflict for me, this was a conflict because it was on Wednesday at 5 p.m. my time, which was really hard for my mental health day. <laughs> now, I still work on Wednesday, but I will either cut my day short or I don't have a lot of meetings. It's just yes. all me. Yes. And um, but what did I do in that situation? You know, I I let it go for months. And then I gave everyone ample time to say, we're going to move this to Thursday, you know, talk to my uh, talk to Nabo HQ and all of that. And so um, that was a difficult conversation, <laughs> but I'm glad I had it. But I love that, you know, we pick one thing that we'll do for, for ourselves, you know, whether that's like go to the gym or I like to go to the gym. And I sometimes I'm like, Margaret, all I'm asking you to do today is 10 minutes walking and then yeah. go to the steam room. And then once I get there, I'm like, wait a minute, I feel really strong. So I'm actually going to run six miles, <laughs> but it's not, you know, it's just that being gracious, not with, not just with others, but with ourselves. And yes. it sets us up for such a, a much more peaceful existence, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, I, I love business. And when I'm, when I'm working, I am really like, I, sometimes you may not get a warm, fuzzy feeling when I'm deep in a project or in a yes. strategy session, a power session. Um, but at the core of me, I just want us all to like, you know, understand that we're all human yes. and be gracious and cheer each other on. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I will say one of the things that uh, I know business owners struggle with is time, right? I feel like everyone feels like yeah. they don't have enough time. So here's just some things that I do. Again, the very practical me, it, all, it comes out every time I'm speaking or I'm talking or consulting is one, do not disturb. Let that be a good friend. And I know there are times in our day where we might not be able to do that if we have children that are at school and we kind of need to be accessible to them. Oh. But listen, do not disturb is incredibly important because when you're working on mission critical work, uh, yeah. it could be work for a client, a deliverable that you need to do for me coming up with content. Uh, and I know for you as well. Put that do not disturb on uh, and then make sure you're taking breaks. Make sure you're hydrating. I think sometimes just like the flowers that are starting to grow uh, as we get closer to spring, they need water. Yeah. Right? And so so do we as well. Um, I'm a big believer in having days not client facing where you are just working on your business, not in your business. For me, that's Fridays. I love to do half day Fridays. Uh, yeah. Eat like a normal person, like maybe like not behind uh, your computer. But if you get the time, even if it's for 10, 15 minutes, it yeah. allows your body just to be able to recharge yeah. um, and then plan in quarterly vacations. They can be staycations or vacations, but it's important to have that time away from the business. Um, and I know people will say, but I can't do it. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, yeah. you can. And the more we practice it, Yes. The more it happens, because I think a big part of that is the control factor, mm -hmm. you know. And so, wow, we are, we are we are talking about a lot of topics, and I'm oh. I'm excited. But they are they're all connected. Yes. I mean, my I know. In the past, I have been a leader that 
I don't want to admit this, especially on all my, my social medias, but I have to, is I've been a leader that was not approachable. And because I'm a, I like to be alone. <laughs> so mm, that, um, part. <laughs> that part. <laughs> so I like to work alone. I, um, and so if I'm in a project and, you know, a team member would email or text or, you know, it's like maybe I wasn't as approachable as I could have been. And then guess who, who really is going to feel that later? It's me. Because mm -hmm. I'm the business owner and the pain comes to me if they mm -hmm. didn't understand something or they didn't get something done because they didn't, you know. And so, I mean, I'm not going to say I was ever like in a rage or anything, but I just wasn't. I've learned. Yes. I've learned. Yeah. That's I good. Know. I know. Did someone give you feedback or it's just your own inner self that knew? It was my own inner self. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, it, it came out more like like you said, like just short, you know, being short, yeah. not being um, super um, like going into detail and just kind of assuming that they yes. got the big bullets. Yes. And yeah. so, I mean, growing as a business owner, like, and you're learning on the job. You're learning on the job. Did, and you came from corporate into your, um, your business. business. Yeah. Yeah. But I was yeah. only... 27. So I didn't even have, I mean, I had corporate experience. Um, but that's, I mean, Dece uh, December is my 15th year in business. Yeah. I love that. So phenomenal. I remember when you said that in empower hour and I was like, wow, because yeah. the statistics are against you, right? That when you start a business, the amount of time, um, how quickly uh, that business can fail. So congratulations. That is <laughs> phenomenal, Margaret. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And you know, it's, and that's okay. So the reason the show is called the Flex Your Influence Spotlight, I think it's important that you know this. So Flex Your Influence, um, I, I started using that and came up with it like maybe six years ago, mm -hmm. because I working with a lot of women business owners, I, um, I found that a lot of them are hidden. Mm -hmm. They're not, you know, that's why they needed us to help them with their digital footprint <laughs> for their brand. And um, so I, I would encourage them like your influence offline mm -hmm. in the business community matters. Yes. And you can, you can expand that online. Now I'm not saying this is for everyone, but if you want to, you can utilize your own digital brand to just talk about, you know, things that are important to you, raise awareness, talk about your business, talk about other people's business. And there we are, we're bring, being community. So yeah. you know, doing a show like this is not easy. It's like, there's a lot of, uh, well, there's a prep on, on our side because yes. we, we've got to get, we've got to send you the invite. Yes. We have to have the process you know, um, oh, yeah. And the process was pretty simple, right? You just go Absolutely. to my account. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So all of that is a process on our end, but the show is important to me because I am practicing what I preach by using my influence to raise awareness on topics and to, you know, just spotlight people that I just see doing amazing things. I love that. Yes, yeah. it is all about community. I will say for the business owners, find a community. Absolutely. Like you need someone who understands what you're going through, the challenges that you're facing, whether it's a business advisor that you have in the business and you have that safe space that's non-judgmental, um, or it is a networking group. I am so thankful for Navo. I was president of uh, the South Florida chapter here, and I immediately knew after going to multiple networking groups, in the beginning, NABA was the place for me. It's going to vary for everyone, but you yeah. do need that incredible community around you. So I'm glad that you have this type of platform. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, speaking of NABA, it's it's like um, the, the thing about NABA too, especially for someone who's private. I'm a very I'm a private person, <laughs> believe it or not, with all the social media and stuff. I still am very private and. Um, so there are some things that I go through silently when I'm in a challenge because I like to problem solve on my own. Then I have like my core, you know, the safe zone, 
But yeah. I look around, you know, I've, I've been associated with NABO now for over t- 10 years, maybe 11. Um, and I have learned so much just by watching and hearing the stories of like, oh my gosh, you know, the, the, the payroll, like horror stories, um, the lawsuit horror stories, mm-hmm. uh, the, the bad client that you had to fire and have the, com- the hard conversation, the hard um, conversation. Yeah. all of that. I mean, so community is everything. And so I, uh, on behalf of Rosalind and I, we, if you are a woman business owner, we want to invite you to learn about NABO. And um, although I love, you know, the local chapters, but not everyone has a local chapter. You don't need one. We, Rosalind and I actually met through um, one uh, uh, the event called Empower Hour, which is every week and it's virtual and a lot of people from all over the country join and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's phenomenal. And you can do that from anywhere. Yes. So we want to, you know, invite you. And, and some people, you know, say, oh, well, I'm, you know, a member of the chamber and, or I didn't get any business when I was a member of NABO for a year. And I would say, don't come to NABO looking for new business. Come to NABO looking to be inspired, to learn, to be in a community you didn't even know that you needed. <laughs> yes. But the business, Rosalind. Absolutely. Yes. And I think if you, uh, I, I think sometimes we're always looking for that tangible, hey, did I get this contract? There's so many intangibles that you're able to receive. And it's yeah. important to have that community around you. Um, yeah. I remember when I was first starting out, the biggest supporters of building my visibility uh, as a business advisor was truly my novel sisters. I mean, because immediately you have a group of ladies that believe in what you are doing uh, and there's always space for you to serve and just start paving the way for the next generation of women business owners. Oh yeah, That in and of itself, um, because we would not be here with our own women, uh, our women owned businesses, if it had not been for the trailblazers that came before us. So as we get ready to celebrate International Women's Day, I'm doing a big coffee meetup at a woman-owned bakery with my Nabo sisters tomorrow morning. Uh, And we're having three different events tomorrow. Just celebrate the fact that you are a woman. And in 2024, celebrate that. Reflect on where you've come and the impact that you've had. And if you don't think you've had impact, ask those around you and see what they say and start to see the patterns of how you've created incredible impact in this moment in history. Yeah. Oh, I love that, Rosalind. This has just been super nice. And I for um thank you for reminding me about mental health month in May. So I would love to do something together again. Maybe if you have another colleague that you want to bring on or um another you know someone that we might know that could would also like to talk on the subject. Um I think that would be great. And um just ever so grateful to know such amazing women and um, whether you know it or not, or whether they know it or not, Mm -hmm. sometimes you make impact and you don't even know that you are. Yes. I have a best friend who I've known since I was about 11 years old. And when I first started my business, I, I would tell her like, I couldn't do this without you. And she said, (laughs) she's like, what are you talking about? She's like, I never even, I've never helped you do anything. <laughs> it's just the fun texts. It's mm-hmm. the laughs. It's yes. the, oh. you know, it's the joy that my friends bring. Maybe they've never helped me with business, but they have helped me a great yeah. deal. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Rosalind, this is wonderful. Thank you so much for having mm-hmm. such a candid conversation about so many wonderful topics. Um, we will see you again. Yeah. And um, I have some, I have a little bit of your information in the, um, in the show notes. Um, so if you need to get a hold of Roslyn, um, you can always reach out to me and I'll um, forward your info to her. Uh, but if you are a business and you need some business advising, I would say like the number one, like the first question I would say is where's your, where's the pain in your business right now? Oh my gosh. <laughs> And then from there, if you have if you, if you have pain, you know, Roslyn might be a nice voice to reach out to. So yeah, thank you. And I would say a lot of times that pain that you think you have is not a tactical error. It might be just your mindset. So wow. 
a quick yeah. fix, a one word, a one. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, when you're those, those days when you're feeling like sluggish, mm -hmm. um, I learned how to get myself out of that. And it was by telling, by being super gentle with myself and just saying, Margaret, just get up and do this, like go out for a walk for 10 minutes. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> but then once I, you know, once you do it, then like the ideas come and you got, you know, it's the one little thing. The power of one. The power of one. It's a whole vibe. Yeah. The power of one. Don't overcomplicate it. Yeah. One. Like I just worked with a business owner. She came in very heavy, very kind of like there was a lot going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and I said, all right, let's put the pillion together. And it really just was like one step at a time. And she was able to see it in a full. Uh, and she's like, oh, my gosh. And I said, it's the power of one. Yeah. What's the one thing that you're going to do to impact your business today? Yeah. Well, because then we see a list of a thousand things. we yeah. need. So yeah. we're just like overwhelmed. Yes. No, you got to figure out what goes in that container. And let me tell you, that long list doesn't go in the container. <laughs> I love it. Well, it sounds like I need to read this book. So I am, uh, thank you for taking the time out of your day. And, yes. you know, it's such a hard time in your family's life and history. And mm. so thank you, Rosalind. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. This has been joy. Yay! What a way to start Women's History Day tomorrow. I know, I know, yeah. right? Well, thank you, everyone. Um, have an awesome day. Celebrate women tomorrow, um, women of all ages. Yes. And um, we will see you on the next one. Yeah.